and welcome to this special edition of Community Update. I am Promise Okoye and with me, Nicole Johnson, Jadip Tuli. And today we have the honor of hosting a distinguished guest, MP Andy Filmo. As a current member of the parliament for Halifax and dedicated public servant, Andy has been a strong advocate for urban development, infrastructure and community growth. With his extensive background in urban planning and a deep commitment to our city, indeed our community, Andy is now running for the office of Mayor of Halifax. What an opportunity. Great opportunity. And in today's interview, we will also look at his vision for the future of Halifax, exploring his plans to address key issues such as housing affordability, economic development, and inclusivity. We will also discuss his strategies for ensuring that all communities, including Immigrants, African Nova Scotians will have a voice in our city's progress. Welcome to the show, Mr. Fillmore. Thank you so much, Nicole. Please call me Andy. I will show and you. It's, uh, it's very nice. <laughs> We're to all family here, right? We're all family. It's very <laughs> nice to be here with the family, Promise and Jadeep, uh, and you, Nicole. Thank you very much for having me and for an opportunity to speak to your your listeners and watchers. Absolutely. And I think because we have a broad audience, we're going to all each of us are going to ask from different perspectives. So when we do our questioning, if you don't mind, just you know, answering as best your ability. So sure. we would love that. I guess my first question up on the list, so we don't waste time because I know that you have a long list of duties today. So tell us a little bit of who Andy Fillmore is before we get started. Oh, thanks, Nicole. Just in a nutshell, um, my name is Andy. I grew up here in Halifax. I went to school uh, nearby, Queen Elizabeth High School. I went to Dalhousie University. So this city is my home, this municipality and all of its splendor and beauty and diversity is the place that I call home. There was a time when, like many of uh, many of all of our friends, um, uh, to find work, I had to move away. Yes. So I did go away for about 15 years uh, to find work because that's just the way the economy was uh, here at that time. Um, but I uh, heard the homing beacon to come back home um, for many reasons. One was to contribute to the growth of our city. And the other one was to raise my daughter here. And I could think of no better place to raise her than in the community that raised me. Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, I would like to ask you on that lines, on those lines only. I got to know your mother was an English teacher. Yeah. And your father was a <laughs> mathematics teacher. That's correct. So how did you incorporate mathematics and English in your politics <laughs> and uh, <laughs> engaging um, the communities here? Uh, Jadeep, I love the question and thank yeah. you very much for bringing my, my parents into the, into the conversation. I, I'm grateful for that. Um, you know, I started out my studies in architecture and they say that architecture uses left brain and right brain. <laughs> and that was certainly my parents, left and right brain, right? Was, my mother was also an artist. Uh, so yeah. to to have uh, working with both sides uh, led me to a career in architecture, which led to a career in city planning that you've mentioned uh, that you mentioned promise actually in the in the introduction. So um, I think the more that we can uh, open our minds and ears to community members and use what we hear in a very intentional and fact based way yeah. is a way to bring these two halves of the brain together for a good public service. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Interestingly. Uh, Andy, you're currently an MP, and uh, one would wonder why the switch, that transition, what really inspired you to move from being an MP and now the interest to becoming the mayor of Halifax? Well, I've been the MP for Halifax for nine years. I've, I've loved every moment of it, and we've really been able to move the dial for, for the, our municipality. We, we were able to move uh, federal investment in, uh, in Halifax from the very back of the pack to the eighth most invested in federal riding out of 338 across the country. So it's been a very good nine years, uh, personally, and but for Halifax, which is really the more important thing. Um, most of my career has been about serving Halifax and the people that call Halifax home. Uh, and when Mayor Mike Savage, who's been a phenomenal mayor Absolutely. for our mm -hmm. community, yeah. uh, really, and a great friend yeah. to so many of us, um, when he announced this spring that he would not reoffer after his 12 remarkable years, um, I've heard the call. I felt a sense of duty. Uh, and a, and a calling to, to come back home and to be back in Halifax and work uh, for my city again, full time, undistracted by uh, by the national issues and by all the trips to Ottawa, quite frankly, <laughs> and to be closer to my daughter. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Family is everything, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. So for me, for me, I guess, since in hearing conversations around the African Nova Scotia community, and that's where my questions will come from, from that perspective. You know, as mayor, 
how would you address some of the issues that, you know, those communities are, struggle with or have barriers around to help improve, whether it's their uh, housing, affordability, employment, education? Yeah. Like, yeah. can you speak to some of that? Sure. Uh, it all starts with listening. Yeah. Listening to understand. So um, in my career, both in uh, uh, community planning and in politics, uh, you don't have success unless you're listening to the people that you're serving. Uh, and the greatest successes we have are when people from the community can recognize themselves, their aspirations, and sometimes even their words in the, in the policies and the outcomes that we, that we deliver as public servants. So this is where it all starts for me. Um, I, uh, to borrow some indigenous knowledge, nothing about us without us. That's right. Uh, so I think that people should be in, fundamentally involved in the decisions that impact their lives. Um, you asked about, uh, addressing racism in, in HRM. I think we have to begin with acknowledging that it's real, yeah, that, it, that it has happened here, is happening here. Um, there is uh, an unfortunate history. We The world knows about Africville, mm -hmm. but it's not limited to Africville. There's more and it's, right. it's ongoing. So um, the way we're going to overcome and correct these wrongs is to listen to community and to seek solutions uh, from everyone and not leave any voice out. Lovely. Thank you. And I think that's why you're a fan favorite. <laughs> Only because, I mean, just, I, I think watching you or seeing you and, you know, being so comfortable at the African Nova Scotia Affairs Gala, I think yeah. that spoke volumes about your character and personality and how the African Nova Scotia receives you. So I, I can give you your flowers to, for that today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was a beautiful evening. It was. It I, was. Look, Corey Adams and the Mass Choir, the, the food, the... The company, there, there's something about that community. I've never seen the cohesivity and the love between neighbors. Uh, it seemed it was like a one big family, Absolutely. like a family reunion. Really. We were in church, then. We were in church. In church, exactly. Right. <laughs> okay, I'd go ahead. Did you have another yeah. question? Yeah, and the, um, in 2015, uh, you said cities are like people. They need to be healed. They need to be saved. They need to be protected. And my question to you is, it is coming from a perspective of minority community that is growing in Halifax. There's so little, but the impact is big. big. Um, so I want to know, uh, because the people who are healed, they heal others, they help others. Yeah. Right. And I believe Halifax is healed now. And that was your vi vision too. Now, what is the plan for Halifax to heal the people, to serve the communities who come from diverse backgrounds? It's an excellent question, Jaideep. Thank you. And you honor me by, by doing that research. I think you're referring to a TED talk, uh, in 2015. Uh, it was a love story to, uh, a love letter to Halifax, basically, is what that was, the city that I do love. Um, cities are like people. They need caring. They need support. They need repair. Um, and like a good friend, they can also uplift us. And that's what we want our city to be. Now, we, I think we'd all agree, we live in the best city in Canada. Uh, we're growing at an incredible rate. People are moving here. They want to be here. Uh, businesses are starting here. We have something very special going on here. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge that this growth and success has come with some challenges as well. Primary among them are, are housing and making sure that people are supported and, and well cared for and well housed. Um, but also uh, making sure that people are supported in all the needs, whether that's health care or or family supports, or even good transit, making sure that people can be connected uh, neighborhood to neighborhood and community to community. So the challenge for the next mayor and council is going to be making sure that this growth and success works for us, works for everyone, yes. and not against us. So in a way that uh, that benefits everyone. So that's going to mean channeling um, the hard-earned uh, tax dollars, municipal tax dollars from, from uh, residents, into things like building more housing, uh, getting more uh, accommodations built, improving the transit system, delivering the fundamental services that uh, HRM residents should rightly expect from their council, and making sure that, uh, that this continues to be the attractive, beautiful, vibrant place that people want to be from around the world. Thank you. Yeah, just talking about um, how people have decided that uh, Halifax will be there their go-to place, uh, you will agree with me, uh, a lot of people have come in here from other continents. Yes. And speaking from the immigrant perspective, um, how can we ensure that this city continues to be that welcoming city mm -hmm. and helping immigrants integrate into it, its community? What are those plans you have if you become a mayor? 
Well, th thank you for that promise. Um, you're right. We have something special here. Uh, it didn't happen by accident. It happened because a lot of people worked very hard for a long period of time to set the conditions for our success. And that success really started to take off in 2010, 2011, 2012. Um, and I was very lucky to count myself among some, um, among the many, many people, uh, that, that, uh, worked hard in the early 2000s to set those conditions. But for that success to continue, we have to continue to nurture it like a good friend, right? We have to continue to, uh, to, uh, to uh, look after our city and, and heal it and, uh, give it the supports it needs. Um, I wanted to repeat something that I said in the opening, which is about listening. Uh, we elected officials, primary duty, sacred duty is to listen to the people that elected them and, and put in place public policies and programs and services that give the support that they need. There's not a lot of room for misinterpreting what's needed. If you just listen yeah. to, to people, um, now I, well, I'll switch over to the sort of the multi, the multicultural nature of Halifax. If I could, we, we know, I think, uh, we all can all agree that one of Halifax's greatest strengths is that it's a world city. Now we're That's a multicultural right. city. That's right. It wasn't always that way. Yeah. When I grew up walking down spring garden road, I might, I would hear the English language, maybe sometimes some French, but now I hear every language <laughs> I can think of walking down spring garden road and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful symphony, yeah. you know? Um, but we have to work hard to make sure that the city continues to be welcoming, that there are business opportunities, so that we're, um, there are social opportunities, so we, that there is no racism of any kind, uh, cannot be tolerated. Uh, so the conditions that we now have to set are just those, removing barriers, to whatever they are, to success of, of newcomers and to everyone who's, who, who lives here. Absolutely. Okay, so this is my, my question for you from, in terms of African Nova Scotians. How would you ensure that, you know, in terms of the decision making process, right? Mm -hmm. And also any plans and, or initiatives around, you know, I mean, we know that the boundaries are changing yeah. for the upcoming election. How do we, how do, you, how would you ensure to include the African Nova Scotian boys and the communities? Because, you know, historically, you know, our lands, our deeds and all of that stuff is still, yes, we have making inroads in and in getting all of that stuff rectified, but at the same time, we still have a long way ahead. So how would you ensure to include that voice around decision making for the betterment of the African Nova Scotia community? It's a great question, Nicole. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I look with great interest at the, what the city has already done, which is to create the, uh, the diversity and inclusion task force. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a, this is a group of people that meet regularly to make sure that these, uh, the voices, all voices are, are incorporated into, into policy making. Um, I would like to hear, should I become mayor? I would like to hear and understand how that's, go how it's going with that, mm -hmm. with that particular task force. And are there things that we can do to expand its ability to listen and, and take action? Uh, one of the things that I've been, um, paying very close attention to, to in the community is this idea of uh, community land trusts. Yes. So I was at Upper, Ham Upper Hammonds Plains Community Center about a month ago hearing uh, about the plans up there uh, for a community land trust, which would not only bring equity back to that community, but would provide housing as well. So, uh, and that's not the only one, right? There's one for, for, the, uh, for the North End that uh, is being worked on by Trino. Um, there are others around the municipality. But this is a way that a community can use their voice uh, to uh, to direct what the city is doing with land ownership and uh, an opportunity really for yeah, people. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and I I want to say if I could, Nicole, I don't have all the answers. Government does not have all the answers. The answers and the wisdom lie with community. With so you'll absolutely. you'll hear me say that again and yeah. again because it's it really I believe that. And I think if I can just add to you, since that the key thing is around the transparency piece, right? Yeah. Conversation listening and being open and also working hard with the people who've been here for years, right? To make sure that it's equal and it's balanced yep. and, and fair. Right? And there, there's something about going to where the people are as well. Early in my career uh, in city planning, when I would hold public engagements, I made the, the early career professional mistake of announcing a meeting at city hall and waiting for people to come from diverse communities. It doesn't usually work that way. Right. Yeah. And so what I learned later in my career go is you go are. where they are. That's right. Go to where they meet are. Meet them where they are. Meet them, yeah. meet the people where Absolutely. they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where they're comfortable, where they're in, in the, uh, in the environment that the issues that they're talking about are important to them are surrounding them. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that answer. Yeah.
And you mentioned about empowering community and listening from the uh, immigrants that are coming here, listening from the societies. Um, my perspective is um, when we see things from rose tinted glasses, everything seems so good. Like we're sitting here having this conversation and there is another part of uh, the community that I would like to highlight here. Um, you see, when immigrants come here, I have seen you um, uh, helping and supporting Indian festivals, immigrant festivals who come here. I've seen you in Diwali and everywhere. But there is another part of the society. The students who come here, they leave their home. They come here, they don't know anyone, anything. And as a representative of uh, Liberal Party, I want to ask you, um, they get engaged in some things which are called drugs. And, you know, in many countries, they are completely banned. Mm. They don't have access to it. Mm. So this is a question. And there is one problem that is arising from this uh, specific issue is that we are losing young representatives from the immigrants who come here, who want to be leaders, who want to do advocacy roles. And they're not getting the chances to do that. So what is the plan? for you as a mayor of Halifax, for the Liberal Party, one, to ban the drugs, and two, to incorporate these immigrants into leadership and advocacy roles? Thank you for the question. I, I want to, before I, before I get into an answer for you, I just want to make sure that, that, that you and listeners understand that in a municipal election, it's nonpartisan. There is no party affiliation. That's right. So That's right. I'll be, I'm leaving behind my affiliation with the Liberal Party mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I resigned uh, being an MP later this summer. Thank you. Um, so just make sure we understand yeah. that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you yeah. for clarifying that. But I'll start. I'll start perhaps with the drug piece and then move on. Yeah. Um, the the Justin Trudeau government legalized marijuana uh, uh, for the reasons that illegal street marijuana was killing people. Yeah. Uh, it was also creating criminality, gun ownership, gang yeah. wars. Uh, there was nothing good was coming from the illegal cannabis market, and so to control that and to make sure that the the uh, marijuana that's on the streets and in people's uh, lungs and hands uh, is, you know, produced safely and free from chemical additives uh, was the reason for this and uh, reason for legalization. And it's I think it's pretty clear now the um, the benefits are becoming are becoming known now. Um, and I know that there, it's not good for everybody. There are some negatives as well. But on balance, the, the jury seems to be have decided that it's a good thing. Um, but how do we keep people, uh, uh, your, your question is about new, newcomers, right, uh, yeah, to Halifax, yeah, yeah. making sure that they have access to the promise of this place, the promise that they came here to realize. Uh, and that is really about, about uh, you know, I visited the Gurdwara uh, many times, but most recently just a week or two ago. And uh, the way that the Gurdwara supports international students, they have a place where the food is familiar, where the language is familiar, where an auntie or an uncle is going to help them uh, to feel at home. Um, the more that the municipality, the city government, can enable uh, community supports, like in, in this one example, the Gudwara, but there are many, many other examples uh, to be to be part of that support network, then that's what the city should be doing. Um, absolutely. Uh, if if you or the community have other ideas about what a municipal uh, role might be in making sure that uh, newcomers and newcomers that are youth are, are occupied and kept busy in a productive and healthy way, then I would love to hear about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Part of my question was, you answered it wonderfully, community itself is helping each other. Um, part of the question is, when youngsters come here, they do have a vision. When you see a 15-year-old guy, I know uh, uh, in your daughter was seven years old when you first become the MP. And you mentioned that you learned a lot from her. Yes. And you know, you, you know that from your experience that these kids, youngsters, they do have a vision yes. for development. They do have answers. They are more smart. They, they know what they want. And why don't we create a platform for them where they can talk, express themselves and government can listen to their views and make a list of it and think of uh, implementing, taking the action is a longer process. This thinking would be the first step about uh, the views. Um, yeah, that's that's my um, solution, if you may say so. Thank you, Jaideep, if I could just respond to this. Um, so over my nine years as MP, at various times, I've convened a youth council 
And the youth council has included university and high school students that advise me on policy that's relevant to youth. I know that uh, the prime minister has done the same thing uh, as well. I'm happy to say that because of those, because of that kind of outreach to the, the youth community, my campaign for mayor, as my past campaigns for MP, are drawing a lot, of, is drawing a lot of interest from youth. So a good portion of our volunteers on our, on this mayoral campaign are young people, our students, high school and, and university, and they're going to help me build the platform uh, that I'll be releasing in the in the next month or so uh, about what to, how it will impact you. Oh, that's good to know. Thank that you for that. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Andy, we gradually running out of time, but I, I thought it was important for you to let us in on the plans you have currently. Uh, I believe there are a couple of things you need to do, maybe campaigns or preparation to get into the LPs and whatever you're doing. How do we know? What are the plans? What are you planning? What are you doing? <laughs> we want to know what uh, programs you have in place towards, um, you know, your... The election. The election. The election. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you just a, a few yeah. uh, big ideas that I'm working toward, if, that, if that's good. Um, clearly the biggest issue facing HRM right now is housing and affordability. Absolutely. Um, we've got record number of people living in tents from Sackville to downtown Halifax to, to Dartmouth. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's everywhere and it's not good. Um, the encampments are, we've seen and, and heard and experienced that they're not good for um, the families and neighbors that live in the area of the encampments because of uh, public safety risk. They're not good for the businesses in our downtown and the economic engine of, of the, of the whole province. But most of all, the encampments are not the right answer for the people living in them. The, the level of investment of municipal tax dollars in the, in the, in the uh, tent encampments had, if that money had been put toward more durable, sustainable yes. solutions, we would be in a, shelter yeah. supports we'd be in a much better a much better situation so um to, just on the encampments piece i'm running on a very clear campaign that we will get to know encampments as as Absolutely. quickly as humanly possible Absolutely. to get uh the people that are in this unfortunate situation the supports and dignity uh, dignified housing arrangements that they need so that's that's one thing but the bigger issue is still housing we have yeah. to build tens of thousands of houses um, and you know, we, at a much faster rate than uh, we've been able to so far. So in speaking with the people that provide housing, uh, not-for-profits, in speaking with the private sector, the builders, in speaking with people who um, have lived in, and are living in affordable housing or would like to find it, um, a picture begun, begins to become very clear that there are many things we can be doing differently to increase the pace of, of housing construction. Changes to the building code to allow modular and prefab um, removal of uh, bylaw barriers in the in the planning department, for example. Increasing the intake of tradespeople at Nova Scotia Community College. Yes, yes. So these things are all kind of underway and all very possible. The private sector is ready to build, uh, and they're they're identifying some very very clear roadblocks that I really want to be a part of removing, so we can really truly ramp up the construction of housing. It's only when we have uh, a vacancy of you know two or three or four percent, and you know we're stubbornly below one percent right now, vacancy rate. Only when we get to three or four percent will the prices start to come back down okay. again. We simply don't have enough supply, That's right. and it's a simple question of supply and demand. Right. So um, the more supply, the less demand, the lower the cost. So that's that's the goal. So that's, that was a long answer on housing, <laughs> but, I'm no, gonna but a good answer. I'm going to squeeze in one more because yeah. this is your area. Urban planning yes. and transportation. Yes. What are your plans around there? It's, uh, it breaks my heart, and, and I think it's not good for the municipality that we're seeing, for example, ferry crossings being canceled on a regular basis. They've become kind of standard to, to have the, sh the ferry shut down. Um, Halifax Transit staff are, are overworked. That's right. They're under, uh, they're under supported. Uh, vacant po uh, job postings are, are not going filled. So I want to understand why that right. is. That's What's good. going on that we can't uh, attract the, the skill and the talent uh, to grow that, that amazing Halifax Transit workforce that we have now. Same thing with buses. People are spending too much time stuck in traffic. Right. Time is the most valuable commodity that any Absolutely. of us have. Yeah. And everything seems to be taking too long now. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, you may have seen in my campaign launch, mm -hmm. I announced that my first act will be to freeze the municipal tax rate for two years okay. while we understand how to deliver services better with the money that we're already gathering through taxes. So this is about efficiency. It's about using data. 
It's about listening to community. Uh, it's about making sure that every staff member at HRM is frontward facing and, and helping to solve the issues and deliver the services that people need. Right. And these are these are issues within the city. Now, can you imagine what the rural communities are facing in terms of transportation, Absolutely. right? Long wait times, yeah. you know, getting home late. If there, is, if there even is a bus. There, even if there is yeah, a bus. Yeah. And those are the issues that are concerning. Even if our young folks want to go to work, how are we helping them have success with, you know, hopping on a bus, getting there in time and getting back? So these are the things that I think about in terms of, you know, the Prestons or any of the rural communities beyond the Eastern Shore. How do we start making this more a viable communities to be able to be in our hometown and then if we need to leave the community for whatever reason that yeah. it's easy right daycares yeah. how do we get our kids around to do outings and all of that stuff right so yeah. even though the municipality is huge the yeah. size of prince edward island and five hundred thousand people dispersed throughout it uh it doesn't mean that the city isn't responsible for making sure that people stay connected yes we don't want to have anyone uh, having the ownership of a car, that decision forced upon them. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can afford it. Not That's everybody right. wants a car. And of course, it's better for the environment, fewer cars on the That's road. Right. So that means transit really needs to step up. Step yeah. up. We need to have uh, all of our communities uh, interconnected in a, in a really usable, reliable way. And there are many, many great ideas about how we can do better uh, in Halifax. I was really encouraged to see the um, the arrival of the new transit app, so that people can. It's a little little easier uh, than fussing with tickets. It's yeah. not perfect, right. you know. I would like to be able to just tap my phone uh, next to the driver, absolutely, and I'd like to get us there as well. So there are, there are a number of things that by listening to community and listening to the drivers. Uh, that we can do better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And my last one, my last question, <laughs> just to jump on what Dylan was saying in terms of the young people, because I was thinking about this as I was preparing for this um, interview today. It's like I have nieces and nephews and they're always talking, they're always sharing things and they're always asking questions. And I think that the way that we honor our elders when they start speaking, the one thing we do, we start, we stop talking and we let them speak. And, and because the wisdom that comes out of them, these kids have wisdoms too, yeah. right? This is their community as well, yeah. and they have input. But if we always shoo them away or think that they don't have value, they do. And I, I just wanted to add it to that because if we treat them the way we treat our elders, I think we'll be in a better place. I was at an Eritrean dinner a few months ago, and I, the thing that I remembered most was the culture of letting the kids be. Yes. Letting oh. the kids them, be yes. kids, That's right. and Let they were having kids. fun, and they were listened to. And I think uh, the world would be a better place if we all listened to each other Absolutely. a little bit, Absolutely. a little bit better. Absolutely. Yeah. Jaden, do you have one more question before we wrap up? Um, yeah, um, <laughs> um, actually, I want him to uh, all the best uh, for the election Absolutely. that you're running. Absolutely. One, and I uh, read about your work that you did during the COVID times and how you planned social distancing and everything, and that was fantastic. Um, that re that was really required. And thank you for that from the side of community, from the minority community too, for making the city accessible to everyone. Uh, my question to you is, um, we can reach out to the um, communities or the festivals that are happening on the bigger scales somehow as MP or mayor, but there are some grassroots organizations, very small, uh, maybe five or ten people, but they are also making changes. They are also contributing towards the development of uh, Halifax, of the community, of the multiculturalism here. Um, what are your plans to reach out to those uh, grassroots organizations and empower them? You're right. There are so many organizations. Uh, the list would be uh, dizzyingly long <laughs> if, we, if we made if we made the list of all of them. Um, I have made it a, a feature of my time as member of parliament to try to see and speak with as many individuals and organizations as I can. Very much an open door policy. Try to turn up everywhere that I'm invited, and uh, that invitation is what I want to how I want to answer your question. So. Um, I try to respond to every invitation that I am offered. I'm here with you today. Thank you for the invitation. Um, but I also issue an invitation to please come and see me. Know that I'm accessible and know that my best work happens when I hear from, from organizations and individuals. So uh, whether it's now as MP for another five or six weeks or if, I, if the people should choose me as their next mayor, my invitation will be uh, constant to come and have a conversation and teach me. That's great. Yeah. All the best for the mayor election. Thanks. Once Thank you, Jadeep. I appreciate yeah. that very much. Thank you for being here today. Yeah. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> I just would have loved to keep talking with you because you seem to be 
such a sweet person to speak with. <laughs> you have so very many things friendly, to tell us. Very, very, very friendly. Very friendly. Very friendly. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. And on behalf of our director, our producer, my co-host, indeed our viewers, I want to thank you for coming to the show. My pleasure, deeply. And I look forward to more conversations in the future. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And thank you. Want to exit him? So we've been here in the studio today talking to Mr. Andy Fillmore, who has put his name forth in regards to the upcoming election for a mayor's office. So please stay tuned. Make sure you have exercised your right to vote. Now, we just also want to thank him for having a very open and candid conversation. If you haven't already done so, please tap into this bell right here and sign up, subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any updates for Community Update. We have been your hosts, Jadep, Promise, and myself. So see you next time. It's bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep. <laughs>